Today we're talking about a character who's been both revered and feared for centuries. Spoken about over crackling campfires. Talked about in the shroud of night as people seek to then lock their windows and their doors for protection. A character who inevitably made his way into Marvel Comics. And that character is Dracula. Dracula first showed up in Marvel Comics with Marvel's Suspense Issue 7 all the way back in 1951. But this was just before the enactment of the Comics Code Authority. Effectively ending that which meant, among other things, no more vampires, ghouls, zombies, or werewolves. That is, until the code was lightened, ushering in the Bronze Age of comics in the early 1970s. The character was kicked off with Jerry Conway in issue 1, and Marv Wolfman came on to Tomb of Dracula with issue 6, following Stan Lee, Roy Thomas, Jerry Conway, and even Archie Goodwin, along with Neil Adams, Gil Kane, Tom Palmer, John Severn, and he carried on with his artist, Gene Cullen, till the end of the series. This is a character taken from the public domain, and which is based on Bram Stoker's 1895 classic, which itself is taken from the life of Vlad Tepish. Vlad the Impaler, a real Romanian Valachian ruler from the 15th century. Vlad is also Vlad Dracul, the root of which is Drac, meaning Draco in Latin, dragon. He was part of the Order of the Dragon, and so Vlad Dracul is the son of the dragon. Artist Jean Cullen based Dracula's facial features on actor Jack Palance after he'd seen Jack in a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde TV show. Conway and Cullen's Dracula first appeared in 1972's Tomb of Dracula issue 1, along with Abraham Van Helsing and Frank Drake. Rachel Van Helsing showed up in issue 3, while Quincy Harker made a first appearance in issue 7. The story of Dracula begins not in Transylvania, but in an ancient time before time. Before the Dark Ages, before Atlantis sunk beneath the waves, that's when a group of Atlantean mystics discovered the unholy parchments that had been left behind by the demon Cthon. They gathered the parchments up into a scroll that would later be bound by the sorceress Morgan Le Fay into the dark grimoire known as the Darkhold, the Book of Sins. It was they who created a spell to force their fallen enemies to walk the earth as vampires. A cult called the Darkholders, led by Tulsa Doom, included a guy named Varney. He was made into a vampire by the Atlantean mystics and became the last of the vampires to survive the Great Cataclysm, ushering in a new era for vampires over the centuries until the 1400s. Vlad Tepish, Vlad Dracula, Lord of Vampires, Lord of the Damned, Count Dracula, the Prince of Darkness, the Prince of Valachia, Dracula. He was born in 1430 AD in Schossburg, Transylvania, which is now part of Romania. At just 14 years old, Vlad went to Turkey with his brother and their father to have a peace talk with the Sultan Murad II. Unfortunately, that didn't go as planned and they were all captured, held prisoner, and tortured for half a decade, with Vlad's family dying in front of him at their hands. It was a regent of Hungary named John Hunyadi that ended up training Vlad in Warcraft upon his eventual return to the kingdom. It was not long after this when young Vlad married a lady named Zofia, and together they had a child named Lilith. But Vlad didn't love them, and so he banished them from his kingdom, just before reclaiming his throne. It was the horrors of the war born of that moment that earned him the name of Vlad the Impaler. At 29 years old, Vlad the Impaler warred with the Dark Riders, servants of Apocalypse, but he was defeated. Later, that ancient vampire Varney implanted visions in Dracula's mind, which led him to being captured by a Turkish warlord named Turok, and then being turned into a vampire by Leanda, who was an ancient nomadic gypsy who was also a vampire. Varney wanted to test his new creation, so he drew him into combat with Lord Nimrod, whom he falsely believed to be king of the vampires, and once Vlad bested Nimrod, Vlad Tepish became the new Lord of the Vampires. When Dracula learned of the Montezzi formula, he had the vampire Bordia killed and he sent a thief to steal the Darkhold. The Montezzi formula was a spell from the ancient Darkhold tome that, when invoked, would destroy all the vampires on Earth. So Cthone's ancient Darkhold tome that had been used to create vampires now also had a spell to destroy them. In the 12th century, about 200 years before Vlad was born, the Darkhold came into the possession of a Catholic monk named Paolo Montezzi, and it stayed in his family for centuries for safekeeping, earning the name the Montezzi Formula. Eventually, it passed down to Victoria Montezzi, who worked with the Darkhold Redeemers and the Midnight Suns to combat vampirism. So when the thief went to steal the book, it was instead taken by Cagliostro, which kicked off their never-ending feud. After that, Dereni stole Dracula's diary, and it wound up in the hands of a writer named Bram Stoker. Dracula also ran into his own daughter Lilith, who by this time had also been turned into a vampire by gypsies. He would run into a heavenly spawn, an agent of the Lord named the Golden Angel, whom Ian McNee thought may be related to Oster, an elder god who was the mother of Agamotto and writer of the Book of Bishanti. In 1898, a gypsy woman named Madame Margarita ran into Frankenstein's monster. She tricked the monster into reviving Dracula, and he killed her for her treachery and deceit. 
Then at the end of the 19th century, Dracula met Jonathan Harker, which in turn led to an encounter with a vampire hunter named Van Helsing. Both Harker and Van Helsing were killed by Dracula when the world was embroiled in World War I. In 1923, a guy named Robert Helsegard created a powerful armor that both he and his partner Ulysses Bloodstone planned to use to capture or kill all the monsters and cryptids on planet Earth. Dracula found out what their plan was and attacked their headquarters. This led to Helsegard being assaulted and then banished to limbo himself instead of the creatures he hunted. Just before the opening shots of World War II, Dracula was at the Radium Girl Lounge to hear the Rusoff Trio play a set when he ran into Evelyn. O'Reilly, a descendant of Van Helsing's, and the two teamed up to fight werewolves. Dracula would visit her over the years, even on her deathbed, as she succumbed to old age. Before Jonathan Harker vanished, he had a son named Quincy Harker who became a proverbial thorn in Dracula's side. At one point, Dracula and Quincy fought, which led to Quincy's wife becoming paraplegic and, sadly, committing suicide. Eventually, Dracula was staked through the heart by Ewan Duff, a Scottish vampire hunter who had ventured to Dracula's own castle to take him out. In the 1930s, Dracula was working with Weapons Plus and people like Professor Thornton, the guy who found Mr. Sinister's work during World War II, along with Baron Blood, and Dracula forced them to conduct horrific experiments, making monsters called the Unwanted as Dracula worked to make vampires immune to the few things that can kill them. In 1942, during World War II, Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos had a run-in with the Lord of Vampires in Transylvania when they were dropped in country for a DX. Years later, in a descendant of Dracula's, a millionaire named Frank Drake inherited Dracula's castle. Drake wanted to turn Dracula's castle into a tourist attraction with help from his business partner, Clifton Graves. But when they went to move Dracula's body, Graves took the stake out and Dracula was revived. Dracula then made both Graves and his fiancée Jeannie into his own vampiric servants. In retaliation, Drake teamed up with Rachel Van Helsing, along with Taj Natal and Quincy Parker. That team next ran into Ilsa Strangeway, a former model whom Dracula had turned into a vamp. Then it was Lenore, another vampire lady that Dracula kept prisoner in a bottle. In Tomb of Dracula 10, we meet Blade for the first time. Then a couple issues later, Blade's girlfriend, Saffron Calder, who later became a mother to Brielle Brooks, Blade's daughter. Then a villain from China named Dr. Sun plotted his own vile scheme. Sun was just a brain, no body, and he needed human blood to survive, so he decided to study and enslave vampires who would help him steal blood. He managed to destroy Dracula, but it was vampire hunters using the virgin tears of a lady named Aurora Rabinowitz who revived Dracula and then helped Blade take Dr. Sun down. After Blade was bitten by Dracula, he had a battle with Werewolf by Night that spanned multiple series. At one point, Dracula was able to penetrate the Vatican's defenses and he killed Giuseppe Montesi to take the Montesi formula, but before Montesi was killed, he sent a copy to Quincy Harker. In 1974, Dracula traveled to London to buy another home, and we see Lilith, daughter of Dracula, for the first time. Jonathan Harker traveled from England too deep in the Carpathian Mountains to try to explain why a Transylvanian royal had purchased real estate in London. There he found the Count's ruins of a castle, a rocky spire worn down by time and by war. Dracula was part of an early magazine-sized iteration of the Legion of Monsters by the legendary Roy Thomas and Dick Giordano, a team that included Dracula, Frankenstein, and Mamphibian. Dracula's story here continues the story that was left off in Dracula Lives issue 12. In Giant Size Man Thing issue 5, Howard the Duck killed Bessie the Hell Cow, a vampire cow that had been following Dracula around slowly for centuries. Later, when Dracula was looking to grow his legions of followers, he approached Anton Lepesky, leader of the Church of Satan. Anton was going to sacrifice a young woman named Domini to the Dark Lord, so when Dracula showed up, he posed as Satan and took Domini as his bride. They had an official wedding and together fathered a son named Janus. After Lepesky shot and killed Janus, he was resurrected and Janus was then possessed by the Golden Angel, an angel from heaven that had opposed Dracula for centuries. Mephisto then decided to punish Dracula for disturbing the balance on Earth with the introduction of the Golden Angel, and so Mephisto took Dracula's powers away. Dracula then made an appearance in 1977's Marvel Preview 12 called The Haunt of Horror, which featured Lilith, daughter of Dracula, right on the cover. In Savage Sword of Conan, Dracula had a rematch with Solomon Kane after the Puritan vowed to help a girl named Margit save her minister father and sister Jilka from the vampire. And then in desperation after what Mephisto had done, Dracula prayed to God. In turn for his levity, Mephisto granted Dracula his powers once more. And so right after that, Harker showed up at Dracula's castle, and they battled each other on the parapets, ending with Harker driving a silver stake into Dracula and then blowing up the castle. Florence Ebers then revived Dracula soon after. She wanted to revive her deceased husband Augustus into Dracula's body with a gem called the Yazdi Gem. He ended up turning on Florence though, so she destroyed the gem. Dracula then ran into the Cult of the Enclave, a satanic sect run by the Dimensional Man. 
He drained Dracula's spirit into McDonald after she'd gotten a blood transfusion from her mother, whom Dracula had turned into a vampire also after biting her many years before. Dracula also bit Howard the Duck, which sent Howard on a feeding frenzy, followed by him also biting Harold H. Harold. The defenders then aided Dracula when he was battling the vampire lord Gortsky, who had support from the six-fingered hand. Around this time, Harker was working with an old British witch named Diana Hetherington to use a skull and his soul to make an amulet that prevented vampires from stepping into Great Britain, unless invited, just like they have to be to enter a residence. And then about a year later in Uncanny X-Men issue 159, Dracula bit Aurora Monroe, Storm, and she became a vampire. So when we get to X-Men Annual 6, Dracula showed up at Bard College where Rachel Van Helsing was teaching. Her first jarring surprise that Dracula was not permanently dead. Meanwhile, Vampire Storm bit Kitty Pride, Colossus, Wolverine, Cyclops, and Nightcrawler and turned them all into vampires too. Storm then flew to Vlad's home in Cornwall to confront him, but was taken down and carried away by his consort, Rachel. Meanwhile, Kitty stole the Montezzi formula and the entire book from Dracula's estate. It turns out though that this wasn't Kitty Pride; it was Lilith in disguise. Rachel then used a spear and a cross to both impale and burn Dracula to the bone. Though with his head still attached, he was able to come back. She then had Wolverine stake her to mercifully end her own suffering, just as Lilith approached the X-Men to tell them her story. After that, he showed up in Chicago with a cult that was channeling power to him, building him toward immortality. As he fed, a victim was taken to the hospital where Donald Blake was working, and he was put on the radar of both Thor and Lady Sif. This is when Dracula bit Lady Sif in her sleep, and the Lord of Vampires planned to turn her on the God of Thunder, but his body didn't agree with Sif's Asgardian blood, and so his followers took him to New York to heal. Doctor Strange was helping Thor here too. So around this time, Hannibal King came to Doctor Strange and his secretary, Sarah Wolf, for help finding Dracula, who was now working with both the Darkholder's cult and the Children of the Night to find the Darkhold. He went to the Scarlet Witch for help, someone who'd recently been enthralled by the book in the Demon Cathan. The Darkhold, it turns out, was hidden in a vault inside of the Avengers' mansion. Dracula sent an army of rodents to attack the Avengers while he emerged from a flooded submarine pen deep underground. He was met by Scarlet Witch, Captain Marvel, and Hannibal King disguised as Doctor Strange while the actual Doctor Strange searched the pages of the Darkhold for answers. Doctor Strange ended up teleporting the Darkhold to a place so evil its stench would be masked, right into the empty castle of Strange's departed foe, Baron Mordo. Strange learned he could erase the curse of vampirism from Earth, so he teamed up with Wong, Blade, and Kings to do that. Strange and Dracul battled on the astral plane until Strange read a spell and Dracula disintegrated along with all the other vampires on Earth. In 1989, Marie Laveau sent Monica Rambeau back in time to France where she stole some of Dracula's blood and brought it back to test out the spell and the spell was still working because the blood boiled and it turned to a misty vapor. In 1991, Marv Wolfman and Gene Colan teamed up once more for the Tomb of Dracula Day of Blood Night of Redemption miniseries. Colan though felt he'd done all he can with the character at that point and he really didn't want to do it anymore. In fact, it was one of the things that played into the original series ending. The demon Asmodeus then plotted to resurrect Dracula using his pawn, a Russian scientist named Gregor Smirnov. Smirnov was studying vampires to learn the secrets of immortality. He even married Marlene, the ex-wife of vampire hunter Frank Drake. He summoned the spirit of Rachel Van Helsing and used her in Marlene's body to find Dracula's body. And when he found it, Gregor had the power of Asmodeus. Dracula then used Gregor's power to tap the belonging cult, but was then taken on by Blade, Frank Drake, Katinka, and Jedi Gollum. Dracula was overcome with all the spirits entering his body, and he exploded. Eventually, the spell holding Doctor Strange's brother Victor, aka Baron Blood, was weakened until it was completely broken when Marie Laveau read the vampiric verses incantation to resurrect Varney. Eventually, the full Montezzi formula spell weakened until the evil organization Hydra and their DOA, or Department of Occult Armaments, was able to use some of Dracula's old DNA to make Bloodstorm 1, the first clone shock trooper they created as part of an army of vampires they planned to bring to bear on their enemies. But Bloodstorm killed everyone at that Hydra site on command from Varney himself. Varney had Bloodstorm steal Frank Drake's necrotic exorcist gun for him, which meant he fought Hannibal King and Frank Drake. Drake overloaded the gun and it blew up, causing Drake and King to merge with Bloodstorm into a new horrific monster. It encountered Blade and Varney's bad seed before Drake and King were separated from the monster. In 1997, Dracula made an artificial companion in the form of Rainy before being driven away by both Spider-Man and Doctor Strange in the aptly named Spider-Man team-up. Blade then went to Dracula's castle following the corpse of his mother. He hacked his way through Dracula's brides and got to Dracula who mocked his presence there. Then Charles Seward infected Dracula with a virus that made it impossible for him to drink human blood. Vlad though was able to heal himself by drinking Seward's own blood. 
He then ran into the mutant team Generation X and was forced to work with Elsa Bloodstone to take on the Nosferati vampire sect who were trying to make purebred vampires and them in turn immortal. Dracula then conducted the Ritual of Ascension, a ceremony which would give him immeasurable power. But the creator of the ritual, an ancient sorceress from Samaria named Divinity Drake, unleashed all the souls of everyone whom Dracula had killed over the centuries and he was overwhelmed with spirits and exploded. Once he recovered, he looked for an amulet that would let him walk in daylight and this led to an encounter with the vampire hunter Blade who then proceeded to stake Dracula again. Later, Lucas Blade, Blade's father, tried to fulfill a prophecy that said he could restore all the souls to the vampires that Dracula had turned, but when his son tried to stop him, the prophecy was fulfilled anyway. Dracula then had Lilith use her power to make a base on the moon for them. And from there, Dracula worked with a cursed pirate captain named Captain Fate, along with a demon named Kiskilla, to launch a war against England, hoping to create their own kingdom in the ashes of a Great Britain they planned to raise to the ground. Dracula signed a treaty with Dr. Doom, ruler of Latveria, then kidnapped Excalibur's father, Dr. Hussein, and turned him into a vampire, while also sending his vampiric legions against MI-13 and a declaration of war directly to Blade. He also ordered the vampire Baron Blood to deliver his mother Spitfire, also a vampire now, to him, hoping this would help draw Blade closer and also bring Harker's skull into the picture. Unbeknownst to Dracula, the leader of MI-13, a guy named Pete Wisdom, had worked with Hetherington to make a decoy skull. Dracula proceeded to destroy the skull, not knowing it was a fake. Then, thinking they were clear to enter Great Britain, he launched his assault, commanding his forces from his flagship vessel called Captain Fate's Serpent's Crown. MI-13 had also captured a demon named Plotka, and they forced Plotka to probe Dracula's mind to learn of his battle plans. Spitfire was able to get in touch with MI-13 and get some MI-13 agents aboard Dracula's ship. It was all Lilith could do to hold the fleet together, even as they ran headlong into the protective barrier around the United Kingdom. Lilith was able to get Dracula herself and Baron Blood back to their base on the moon, but MI-13 hunted them down. Blade then destroyed Baron Blood while Faiza Hussein rooted out Lilith and destroyed Blade with the magical sword Excalibur. Somehow, Dracula was revived and showed up on Varney's Vampire Island, a Greek isle where vampire sect leaders met once per century. Dracula's son, Zerus, teamed up with allies from the Nosferatu, Aquius, and Shamaputra sects to attack and destroy Dracula. They succeeded and kept his body in a tomb while his removed head was kept under the sea offshore. Zerus then took over and the vampires invaded San Francisco. So in response, the X-Men revived Dracula, believing him to be best equipped to stop his own son. Storm and Gambit recovered Dracula's body while Namor went under the sea to get Vlad's head. Dracula was then able to kill his own son, separating his head from his body. To honor his agreement with the X-Men, Dracula ordered all the vampires to retreat from San Francisco. It was then that Dracula once more became Lord of the Vampires, ruling over all the sects around the globe from his Carpathian castle. In Nick Fury's Howling Commandos, Dracula's daughter Lilith ended up working with people like the vampire werewolf hybrid Nina Price, aka Vampire by Night, along with Zombie, the Living Mummy, Frankenstein, Warwolf, and Gorilla Man to battle the evil sorcerer Merlin. Dracula later teamed up with Darkhawk, Deathlock, Sleepwalker, Wonder Man, Coldblood, and Terror when they were taken to Battleworld by the Stranger. And then Dracula teamed up with Rezo Kodo to battle a Hammer of Null-empowered Incredible Hulk during the Fear Itself event, thereby protecting the area from the rampaging Hulk. In Deadpool the Gauntlet, Dracula wanted to marry the Queen of Monsters, Shikla, to unite all monsters, but Deadpool showed up to get his love, Shikla, back. Dracula used Medusa's head to freeze Shikla, but Deadpool was still able to save her. And then at the end of 2014, Dracula used a refurbished Spider Slayer armor to attack Deadpool. A few years later, Wolverine was tracking Jubilee and he ran into the Howling Commandos from S.H.I.E.L.D.'s stake division as they were tracking Vampire by Night, which led them all right to Dracula's castle. In that same year, Deadpool teamed up with Cammy Van Helsing to find Dracula and use his vampire army to attack the monster army in Manhattan. Chickla then used a Sandman device and the Scepter of Manticore to put everyone in Manhattan to sleep so she could reign unopposed. But she wasn't. Spider-Man Deadpool and Cammy Van Helsing infiltrated the city with Dracula, who was able to enthrall the vampires there and turn them on Shikla. Instead of battling Shikla, Dracula proposed and the two got married. A few years later, Dracula and his loyalists were living in Chernobyl, their own vampire nation, and fought with the Avengers. In Ukraine, at the Chernobyl site, Dracula was still ruling his kingdom with Lady Cromwell, aka Baroness Blood, close by his side. She was part of the Legion of Unliving. In the fall of 2019, Dracula was playing Baccarat in Miami against Black Fox when Ulysses Bloodstone showed up and robbed him. 
Dracula then hired Omega Red to penetrate the mutant island nation of Krakoa to lure Wolverine away in order to steal some of Logan's blood in exchange for Omega Red's long-lost carbonadium synthesizer. He succeeded and Dracula took in Wolverine's blood, allowing him to now walk in daylight. In France, Wolverine ran into Louise from an ancient holy order called the Night Guard that was fighting back against Count Dracula and the Vampire Nation. In fact, they caught up with Wolverine in snowy Canada and trapped him in a block of ice to drill his blood out. But of course, he fought his way out. Vlad then tried to capitalize on the chaos in the wake of Null's symbiote dragon invasion of Earth to demand his Vampire Nation be officially recognized by the world a sovereign nation laid upon radioactive ruin. A step too far, though, was to try to get Zerus a seat on the United Nations Council. Meanwhile, Wolverine continued to hunt down Dracula and the Vampire Nation's Dr. Boggs, who betrayed Vlad, which led to the Count killing the Doctor anyway. The Winter Guard were hunting Red Guardian, White Widow, and a missing Operation Snowblind data disc, and ended up making contact with the Lord of Vampires. Dracul planned to release the disc to the world to let it shine and burn in the light, crashing world governments, toppling countries as the knowledge was released. When Doctor Strange was murdered and dimensional protections fell with him, Blade traveled to Vampire Nation to keep Dracula and his legions of unliving at bay. Dracula hopped on a motorcycle and rode out with the likes of Blade, Doctor Doom, and Man-Thing for the Hell's Backbone Rally, a chance for the winner to meet the devil himself. When he was at the helm of a blood train filled with blood donor victims, the spirit of vengeance, Blade, and Morbius attacked him. Soon after that, and Vampire Nation was in disarray. A revolution was underway, and Dracula, as resident sheriff, was the only thing keeping it from spilling over Vampirsk's borders and affecting the world. And then in 2023, during the Exterminator series, we learned that Allison Blair, aka Dazzler, was dating a guy named Alex who was, of all things, the son of Zerus and the grandson of Count Dracula. They broke up and almost caused an international incident. And most recently, Marvel released a What If book called What If Tomb of Dracula that explores what would have happened if Dracula had transformed Blade into a vampire. And the book also features the return of Loth Drake. And so, what will happen next? We'll have to wait and see, which means that's a wrap on this, my friends. I'm Jesse. This is JLS Comics. Happy Halloween, and I'll see you soon.